lots of reasons to believe in a dog food brand. Great nutrition, great price, and your dogs love the taste. But what if it's also made for Caribbean dogs? No artificial colors or flavors, with an eye on the environment, so we only use paper bags. Then you will be just as happy as your dog, truly. It's true, we love dogs. Welcome to Purebred Dogs JA. Today we're looking at the Rottweilers with Mr. Martin. At Marsden Kennel. Now Mr. Martin will be sharing with us his expertise with over 50 years of breeding. Let's go. Mr. Martin, welcome to Purebred Dogs. Thank you for being here. Thanks for asking me. <laughs> <laughs> Over 50 years you have been breeding dogs, right? What inspired you to actually start? Uh, well, I grew up with dogs. So virtually all my life I've had. Uh, Clyde Fisher brought in the first Rottweilers to Jamaica. Yeah. And basically the breed has built from that. Over the years, individuals have brought dogs. Yeah. Uh, after about 1980, I started importing and went for probably about 22, 24 years. Well, bringing dogs in, trying to improve the breed. Uh -huh. right? yeah. At that time, we could only bring from the UK. Uh -huh. uh, so we had to depend on the UK for source material, so to speak. Yeah. Hopefully trying to get a gene pool adequate to develop the breed. Interesting that you say improving the breed. One of the, one of the ways to improve the breed is to know the history of the dogs. Mm. What are the other you know, principles that you use to improve the standard? Well, you kind of looked like you have books that are in the UK, a breed book, and you'd have the history of the animals that have won in the UK over a period of maybe 30 years. Okay. So you could see what was being produced. So when you're actually buying, you weren't buying blind. Yeah. You're, you're knowing what you should get and you're trying to replicate it. Uh -huh. uh, unfortunately, in a lot of cases, no one wants to sell you the best. They want to keep the best yeah. and then give you what left. <laughs> and that, that was the issue with the UK. For the most part. That's when you're importing the dogs. That's when you're importing the dogs. What is your like process of selection in terms of importing? Uh, well, you try and, and buy from a reputable breeder, a breeder who has had success in the ring. So you have to do research. Yeah, you're not going to buy a dog that from somebody who has never had a winner, mm -hmm. right, so to speak. If they had not had success, you're not going to purchase anything from them. Yeah, you know, one of the things, a lot of times, like, like for persons who just, you know, just buying a dog, and a, not just buying, but persons who, who, who like dogs out here, they want somebody like a breeder say, okay, the dog is from overseas, they think immediately of quality, it is quality dog. What are your thoughts on that? Look at it a different way. If you had a little puppies, would you sell the best puppy in that litter. No. Well, the same applies abroad. <laughs> you are you are trusting to chance, mm -hmm. right? You're rolling the die, right? Yeah. Will it work or won't it work? How would you go about and select? Well, I, I I I brought in. I didn't go abroad. You don't go to England to pick the puppy. You have to. You you contact the breeder and you, you determine what you want and you try and tell the breeder what you need. Yeah. Uh, he knows fully well or she knows what is, uh, what is right for you, but is whether they are going to give you what you require. I have found for the most part that, it, that they don't. Mm -hmm. Eventually I went and bought an adult dog in Europe, in Germany, yeah. bred the dog in Germany, carried the dog to the UK and then brought the puppies from that dog 
into Jamaica. How, how long was that? That was in 1995. 1995. When was the last time you imported a dog? Uh, probably about 20 years ago. 20? Mm. So all the dogs you now are local bred? Local bred, but they are, the bloodline is there. Yeah. Same, the, the bloodline from the imported. And then what I did was I left a male in England. Okay. Uh, as well as the bitch that I brought from Germany. And I bred them and I brought progeny from them into Jamaica. So you have a setup, you have a kennel set up in England? I had a, I had a, a kennel, in, a registered affix in, in, in England mm -hmm. and had a kennel which I had used to ship the dogs down to me. And I had someone who was acting on my behalf who was shipping the animals. Okay, so you pretty much had your own setup. So the hustle and tussle of not getting the best puppy it didn't work exactly as I would have liked yeah. because the arrangement, whether the person alleged that they didn't have the time, mm -hmm. uh, that this was a big breeder, uh, for whatever reason, it didn't work it as well as it should. You have been dominating the dog shows, right, locally. 15 dog shows you would have won? Maybe not. 15, 15, maybe 14. 14. Could be 14. <laughs> couple of times I have lost. So I mean, I can't remember exactly when, but a uh, couple of times. How do you manage to remain so consistent? Well, I think that we are we are very careful as to how we breed the dog. Yeah. You try and ensure that the bitch is adequate and the male that you're using will give you what you want. Yeah. Right, and up to now, I suppose we have been lucky. I don't, I don't think that's lucky. I don't know what I mean. Yes. But uh, there are other people who are trying to yeah. step up. And I believe in time. I'm getting old over the hill. Uh -huh. Right. They, they will replace me, so to speak. I like the fact that they mentioned, you know, there are other persons. But what are your current thoughts? You, have, you would have seen a lot in terms of dog breeding over the years. What are your current thoughts on the state of the breed now? Because of the amount of Rottweilers out there, you can find good Rottweilers. You can find them. The problem is there's been a lot of indiscriminate breeding, which there's also a lot of substandard yeah. Rottweilers. Uh, too many people are in it for the money. Yeah. Uh, and if they couldn't make money from it, they wouldn't do it. I, I don't breed, I will not use a stud dog if I can't get a puppy. I'm not in this to get a return for this a stud fee. Yep. I'm here to try and hopefully that you'll produce something that I can pick and say, well, this will help me. And I think that that has had a lot to do with my success. Yeah. And you don't sell puppies? Uh, I, very, I don't breed that much, mm -hmm. I very rarely, maybe twice a year, okay. once a year. And as I said, if I do, I, this would be a stud dog I would use. If I use him, I'm trying to get a puppy from whoever I'm supplying the stud dog to. Okay. I'm not trying to, to get just, cash. You don't just populate. Right. The, the I'm, like I'm trying to get a dog that can help me or a bitch, whatever it may be, I want it to help me. And I'm not looking, if, if the person's going into it just to sell pups, I'm not really interested. Yeah. Because that person will have a good dog and I may even recommend that they keep it. Uh -huh. I don't want to keep it. Their interest is in sale yeah. and a dollar. Right. And, not that. and I think that that is why many people have not had the success that they think they should have, right? which is not wrong with that. One of the things, one of the things that I like, you know, looking at your dogs, is the consistency of how they all look the same, pretty much in terms of how we can identify them. Well, you try, you're trying to get a minimum standard, and that's what we're trying to get. You don't want anything less than that. You'd love to get more, right? but. You don't want less. Right? Based on this dog, right? This stud, what more can you ask for from this dog? Uh, 
But like he, all dogs have faults. Mm -hmm. right? In the rear end, you'd barely keep it too straight. Right? Uh, wouldn't have mine, a bit more depth of chest. Yeah. Right? Those are the two faults. Uh, well, uh, but those are faults, right? Nothing is perfect. If he had a little more turn and more depth of chest, he would be close to perfect. So that, that is your ideal dog? Probably close to perfect. You know, Rottweilers, I'm excited to be here because Rottweilers is actually my favorite breed. And, you know, you always, you know, once you're in the circle of Rottweilers, you always have Mr. Martin, you know, Mr. Martin dog. Everybody wants to have some dog or have a dog from your line. You know, I always wonder why is that? But coming here today, you actually I actually see and understand it. You know, apart from you winning the the, the um the dog shows and dominating, but what I like is the, the, the principle of how you go about to maintain that standard and I think we as I can say for myself as a young breeder and others should really strive to be like that and the longevity. How do you manage to, you know, be so successful? Well, it's, we just have uh, the same principles have been what we have used over 25, 30 years. So stick to it, yeah. right? And recognize the fact not to be kennel blind. So you recognize the fact that all the dogs will have fought. And what you're trying to do is just accept them. If you're showing the dog, you're trying your best not to show the faults. Yeah. Right? So you will know the fault. If, if the dog should be gated at a certain speed, you get it at that speed. So as not to show the fault. Everybody tries not to show the fault. And it doesn't matter who is showing what dog. What you're trying to do is to show the good points. Nobody's trying to show the bad points. Yeah. You don't want the judge to see the bad point. If you have an all breed judge, he comes, uh, things like not enough turn in the rear, uh, depth of chest, most of them won't see. The just, the, a specialist will see, but they won't see. I just compete and, and basically, we're trying to improve the standard, right? If you have a dog and I don't think it's up to scratch, I'm going to tell you it's not up to scratch. And don't breed that dog. Don't breed it. Some people don't like that. Mm -hmm. right? uh, they feel or they will say, you have so much dog, you can't do that. Yeah. Right? But it's not a matter of so much dog. If the dog is not good, you're wasting your time. Mm -hmm. right? They don't so, want to populate the, the, the yeah. with you know, dogs that have no standard. But they want to populate. Because <laughs> right? they want to sell it for the maximum they can get for it. But one of the things what, that is lacking, you see, and I hope this show can help to you know bring some more awareness in terms of knowing the standard of the dog and the quality of the dog that you are buying you know so that is that is the whole you know hope that you know more persons can get information because i think that is like why you have breeders who just sell the dogs without you know at, at a breeding standard no but the, the thing is if 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 people have integrity they're going to tell the truth yeah i've given away far more dogs than I have sold. Yeah. But I give it away as a pet. I don't give it away as something that I'd want it to breed. I'll tell you, I don't want it to breed a dog. I give it a dog. So if you have a child, you want a dog, I mean, take a dog. I don't have an issue with it. But basically, I may not consider it, or I'll consider it pet quality. And this is what they do in the UK and most places. In Europe, like in Germany, they may put down the animal. The cull, right? Which is sounds kind of sinful, right? Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. they'll be calling dogs that because we. Just the dog. Yeah. Right. All right. All right, so now Mr. Martin is going to show us the breed standard of Rottweilers. Let's go. This is Mara. Uh, a champion bitch, eight years old. She would basically be what she was striving to achieve. Uh, uh, for a Rottweiler bitch. She fits the breed standard. The dimensions are correct. 
She has enough turn, enough depth of chest. Her top line is adequate. The head is good, a feminine head that you wouldn't want for much more. This is a, this is a, a reasonable meal. Uh, a little smaller than the one you had seen before. Again, fault would be uh, not quite enough depth of chest, uh, and he would be probably two inches below the breed standard for height. At the shoulder, he's probably about 22, 23 inches, and he should be 24, 25. But he is a nice specimen otherwise. She's a, a good representative of the breed, but a little bit below the breed standard in height, probably two inches below. As a year old, one would hope that she'll grow a bit more. All of the kennels were laid out to, to give the animals maximum movement space that they could exercise without having to move them. So each of them have probably 2,000 square foot of space to move around. Uh, once the dog is out there, it's not restrained. So we don't use leads. As we come to an end of another episode, I would like to thank our sponsors, True Pet Food. Now, just before you go, remember, like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel at Purebred Dogs JA. Follow us on all social media platforms at Purebred Dogs JA. Until next time, 